These are two brand new massive CPU air coolers from Be Quiet. It's the Dark Rock Pro 5 and the Dark Rock Elite. They're both upper tier coolers targeted at high performance system builds and workstations. Sounds great, but with so many similarities between them, how do you know which one's gonna be best for your build? Luckily for you, I've been spending a ton of time with these things, testing the hell out of them, and there is one that I would recommend over the other. Really quick, let's go through the unboxing so you can see what you get. Inside here, we've got some installation instructions, and these are excellent, by the way. They're really easy to follow, some of the best I've seen. This has all your mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD sockets, and a small tube of thermal paste. It's enough for about two or three applications. Let's get the cooler out of here, and you can see it's really packed tightly in there with some foam for protection. Be Quiet includes a Phillips screwdriver with these coolers. It's not a huge deal, but I always like to get a little something extra, so I appreciate that. And here's the first look at the Dark Rock Pro 5. This thing is gorgeous. I love the all black design and the build quality. Like, it feels really solid. There's the front Silent Wings fan. Heat pipes and CPU contact surface looking good. And the top has this nice cover with the Be Quiet logo and a little bit of mesh. It looks good. I'm not gonna go through the whole unboxing again for the Elite because it's exactly the same. See, it's a different cooler, but the same sort of package. So jumping ahead, right away the big difference here is the continuous ARGB light bar on top and that brushed finish. I think it's a bit more premium looking compared to what we have on the Pro 5. Looks pretty similar from the side profile there, but very different front fan setup. Everything about this one on the Elite is custom from the size to the way it mounts. And I think it enhances the overall aesthetic a bit too. Both coolers are quite large with the Elite coming in just a bit heavier. With these kind of dimensions, the size of these things should be taken seriously when planning a build. They're gonna take up a lot of space. The platform support or compatibility is the same, and they both use a dual tower seven heat pipe setup with two fans, although the fans are not the same, and we'll dive into that in just a minute. The Elite's TDP is 10 watts higher, and it has a higher overall noise profile as well. And of course, the Elite's the only one with any sort of ARGB. The fin stacks on both models look the same, with the backside having an alternating indent pattern with some notches cut out from the bottom corners. The bases are copper with a nickel plating, which allows for the use of liquid metal thermal paste like Be Quiet's own DC2 Pro. On top of the base, they each have a small heat sink. Be Quiet's clearly using every last millimeter of space to enhance cooling performance. And the mounting bridge is permanently fixed, and that's gonna have a huge impact on installation. It's gonna make things so much easier and convenient, not having to mess around with that little bridge that you gotta line up perfectly while you're trying to screw stuff down. It's just so much better. The Pro 5's using a 120 millimeter Silent Wings 4 fan with a maximum RPM of 2000, and the Elite's using a custom designed 135 millimeter fan with the same max RPM. In their normal configurations, the Pro 5 has a memory clearance of about 45 millimeters and the Elite has just 32. That's really not a lot of room for anything but low profile RAM, but both coolers can have their front fan height adjusted. The Pro 5 uses basic wire clips so it can be moved up by taking off the clips, sliding the fan up, and then reinstalling them. With the Elite, Be Quiet built in a set of sliding rails with different height settings, so you can push the fan up to wherever you need it without having to handle any clips or other hardware. I like the idea, but it's way too tight. It takes a ton of force to get this thing moving, and it just kind of feels like I'm gonna break something. I have no idea why they thought it needed to be this tight, but I think they should consider loosening it up to make it a bit more user-friendly. On the Pro 5, the top cover pops off and opens up to a bracket that holds the center fan in place. You can pull that fan out to get access to the mounting area. With the Elite, the cover is just a frame around the edges. That pops off and then the center fan can slide out the same way. The center fans have the same dimensions on both coolers, but have different max speeds with the Elite at 2000 RPM and the Pro 5 at 1500. Both coolers have a manual speed switch that lets you select either performance or quiet. In performance mode on the Elite, the max speed on the front and center fans is 2000, and in quiet mode, it drops to 1500. Performance mode on the Pro 5 is 2000 on the front and 1500 on the center, while quiet mode is 1700 on the front and 1300 on the center. That switch is a quick and easy way to set max fan speeds without having to use software. But of course, you can always just set it to the performance mode and then use software to set custom fan curves if you'd rather control things that way. The front and center fans connect to each other with this little proprietary connection. And from there, it connects to your motherboard with a single standard fan connection. And yeah, I totally get it. Even though it's just a cable, I know some people are just not gonna like the idea of a non-standard design. 
All right, so I'm gonna start things off here with the Pro 5. I'm installing on LGA 1700. The CPU I'm using is the Intel Core i7-13700K. So the first thing I need to do is get the Intel mounting backplate and insert the post into each of the four holes. This does support multiple Intel sockets and there's different alignments depending on which socket you're using. For LGA 1700, it's the outermost location. Now we take this and it should just slide right into the backside of the motherboard here into the four holes. If you set the posts up properly, there shouldn't be any issues with it. It should just slide in effortlessly, just like that. Now on the other side, we need to take these little screw posts here. These are what secures the back plate around the socket to the motherboard. So I'm gonna go around one at a time and screw these things down onto that back plate. Next up, we gotta install these support brackets. That's what the cooler actually mounts to. For LGA 1700, we're gonna be using the outermost holes again, and you just have to make sure these little notches or bump outs are facing inward towards the CPU like that. So not this way, but this way. These get screwed down with two screws each, one in each corner, and I like to go back a second time and just make sure the screws are nice and tight, because this is what's really holding the cooler on there. You don't want anything loose or moving around, we want nice, solid, and consistent contact right on the CPU IHS. I'm gonna put a little bit of the included thermal paste onto the top of the CPU, just a little bit right in the center. The force of the cooler when it's mounted is gonna spread that out evenly. Now let's get our cooler. Make sure you take the plastic cover off the base before you install it, and I've already done that here. I'm just gonna lower it right down where it needs to go onto the CPU. And then we're gonna tighten down the two screws on the bridge, alternating back and forth, a little bit at a time on each side so that we can get nice even pressure on there. Again, the beauty of this design is that the screws are already attached to the bridge, which itself is permanently attached to the cooler. Makes this part a whole lot easier. Now we can just take that center fan, get it lined up, and drop it back in there. It should just click right into place. Perfect, just like that. To connect the cables, there's this little Y splitter here. That's the proprietary connection that Be Quiet came up with. So you can connect that and daisy chain these two fans together. Now those two fans are linked and you just have to take a single fan connector and plug it into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. And boom, done. Rewinding back a few steps, the Elite installs the exact same way, with the only difference being that there's an extra connector for the ARGB. So after you daisy chain your fans together and get them onto your CPU fan header, all you have to do is take this other cable and plug it into an open ARGB header on your board, and you're done. Getting the coolers onto a motherboard really gives a sense of scale so you can start to get an idea for how big these things are. The Pro 5 has pretty decent RAM clearance, but keep in mind these HyperX Fury Beast modules are on the shorter side for RAM modules. The Elite, on the other hand, is sitting just a smidge above the RAM, so you're gonna need to slide that fan up if you want to install anything bigger. The sliding fan's a good feature to have, but I don't know, to me it just looks kinda weird having that fan sticking up like that. For a build with the Elite, I'd just stick with low profile RAM so I don't have to deal with that. But hey, that's just me. For the performance testing, I ran the coolers through a bunch of tests in both performance and quiet modes. During a 10 minute loop of Cinebench R23, the 13700K never throttled once with either cooler. The difference between performance and quiet modes wasn't really as much as I was expecting, but there is a small trade off if you plan to go for that lower noise profile. The Elite edged out the Pro 5 overall, but not by a huge margin. It's not too surprising though, considering they're almost identical other than the fans. Exporting a 4K project in DaVinci Resolve, the average temps stayed below 80C. That's a really solid result considering how intense of a workload this is. Again, these two coolers are really close in terms of overall performance. 3D Mark Times buys a synthetic benchmark that can give some insight into gaming performance. These two coolers produced identical results here, closing any sort of gap that we saw in the previous test. A little bit of variation showed up again in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty where the Elite pulled out ahead of the Pro 5, keeping things a few degrees cooler. And a similar result here in Forza Horizon 5, the Elite managed to keep things just a tiny bit cooler than the Pro 5, but both coolers are keeping the 13700K around 50C, which means they're not even breaking a sweat in gaming workloads like this. Looking at sound levels and performance mode, the Pro 5 kept things quieter overall compared to the Elite, with one exception being Cinebench, which is the hardest test, so maybe that front 120mm fan on the Pro 5 gets a bit noisier at full speed compared to the 135 on the Elite. Flipping the switch over to quiet mode, I got very similar results, where the Elite was louder in everything except Cinebench. Overall though, I'd have to say both coolers are doing a good job keeping noise levels down. So should you choose the Dark Rock Pro 5 or the Dark Rock Elite? 
playing around and looking at test results, it's very clear that these are pretty similar in a lot of ways. But the Elite manages to pull slightly ahead in raw cooling performance, albeit at the cost of slightly more noise. And it has an elevated overall look with the custom front fan, brush top cover, and ARGB lighting. Considering the not so big price difference between them, I recommend going with the Elite. The Pro 5 is a solid option, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, the extra few features and that extra little bit of performance you get with the Elite, I think it's worth it. I'm going to have full specs, details, more information for you down in the description along with purchasing links for both of these coolers. Check that stuff out if you're interested and make sure you get subscribed for more content and we'll see you soon.